Ah, yes. Ebony. A game I started playing a few months ago that may have a reputation of being the most despised game on the web. Whether you started playing it for its challenging puzzles or to discreetly save the queen, or maybe you were just impressed by the incredible, innovative server technology that Ebony possesses. Whatever it may be, we all quickly found out that this is a war game full of adults acting like children and throwing away tons of money to fill in that void of acceptance in their lives. Overall, the game is quite terrible. But I found something fascinating about it. No one knew the game mechanics, and whenever you look up any game mechanics on the web or on YouTube, they're either wrong, incomplete, or come with a disclaimer saying that no one knows and Ebony's never shared them. I found this secret annoying, yet exploitable. If you were to figure out the mechanics, the actual game mechanics, you can have a huge advantage and take down the heavy coiners. So I did just that. These aren't going to be your typical tips and tricks. This is how the game works. You can watch Genghis if you want something more casual or if numbers scare you. So let's begin. First myth. Troops start at a distance depending on the unit with the longest range, which will typically be Siege. Uh, this is something that I think came from the previous generation Ebony. However, in The King's Return, this is not true. The units start at a staggered range. Grounder in the very front with the siege in the back. In fact, ground is so far in the front that they will reach enemy siege before the mounted. Uh, second myth. Traps affect different units, or only one type of unit. In fact, traps will affect any unit. Your rock traps will hit siege. They'll hit ground, they'll hit um, mounted. They will just do more damage to range, and they will prioritize targeting range first. But if that's the only trap that you have, they will target other units as well. Third, and this is a common myth, tier 12s have different mechanics. And they attack from either the top down, bottom top, sideways, it's something. And I see this myth often. The reason why tier 12s appear so strong is because how close their stats, their base stats, resemble tier 13s. They work just like any other troop. And the last myth is that troops hide behind walls. Uh, in fact, the wall has very little to do with the battle. It's more uh, for being forced teleported. Uh, the Archer Tower does play a role in your defense. It acts like a uh, true player with its own attack, defense, and HP that are all fixed. Uh, this is why your Archer Tower may be on fire, even if you won the defense. It's because it was in that battle, and it could have been damaged, even if you won. So my first step in figuring out the battle formula was to understand how attack, defense, and HP interact with each other. So I started doing a ton of mock battles to gather as much data as I can. Figuring out a formula that works was frustrating. My desk was covered in papers. I had to relearn Excel, and I was sleeping with my calculator while watching YouTube videos on binomials. Eventually, I came up with the following formula. And don't let the math scare you. We can walk through this step by step so you can figure it out easily. So let's start on the right side of the formula. Attack divided by attack plus defense. This is gonna come out to be some kind of decimal, a 0 0.8, a 0 0.6, a 0.5. It allows you to understand how much your attack was reduced by the enemy's defense who you are attacking. And then you're going to multiply that decimal number to your attack to get your actual attack value. Then you have to multiply it to your troop modifier. And this is going to depend on what troops are fighting each other. And it's different for every troop. 
then you're gonna multiply that to the number of troops that you have in your troop layer and that's gonna tell you how much damage you're gonna take away from the HP of the opponent. So let's go over the example. Tier 1 Siege versus Tier 1 Siege with the following base stats of 100 attack, 50 defense, and 100 HP. There are zero buffs and a troop modifier of 0.5. And we start off and we say that there's one troop times 100 attack times the 0.5 troop modifier and then you have the 100 attack divided by 100 attack plus 50 defense and that breaks it down to about 50 times two thirds which gives you a damage of 33.3 per siege unit and that would require three of those siege units to attack in order to kill one tier one siege. And here are the troop modifiers for each unit. Uh, siege gets reduced quite a bit. Uh, ranged gets reduced when attacking ground. However, it has a 20% increase when attacking mounted. Uh, mounted troops are uh, the same on all units. And ground do less damage to ground, and they do 30% uh, less damage to mounted. And if you're curious about what that damage column is, that is base stats with no buffs, uh, using the formula that we used before. Uh, so as you see, the very top one is Siege versus Siege, and we already determined that they do 33.33 damage with a troop modifier of 0.5. So let's do another example. 34 range units first 1,000. So we'll do the following formula and we come up with 2,498 damage. When we divide it by the HP, we have 9.993 troops wounded. And when we look at the actual battle, we'll notice that only nine troops were wounded. And this is the reason why I chose 34 units is to show that even if you have a fraction of a unit left alive, it will stay alive. Ebony does not round up when it comes to wounds. Okay, one more. I promise it's the last one. In this one, we're going to demonstrate what happens when you take 100 tier 1 ranged versus 2000 tier 2 mounted. The reason why we're using 2000 is so that we know when the mounted reach these archers, that they are obliterated in one turn. Uh, there's not multiple battles going on. So we use our formula with the 1.2 troop modifier and we conclude that we're gonna do 6,145 damage per turn. So we're gonna divide that by HP and we come up and predict that we're going to wound 11 mounted troops. So let's look at the battle report. And it's 22. And this is what I wanted to demonstrate. The fact that the ranged troops will hit the mounted troops twice. The same thing happens with siege. The siege will hit a unit multiple times before they can reach the siege. The counterattack. This is a mechanic that only a few people know and almost no one understands in Ebony. If one enemy troop survives in any given layer, the troops that are wounded, that you wounded, will deal counterattack damage if the damaging troop is within range. If all troops are wiped out, no counterattack damage is received, and this is what causes wounds to your lower tier troops. All troops attack from the top tier down. To give you an example, in the attacking phase, the attackers will attack the defenders. If they're unable to wound all the defenders of that layer, the defenders that were wounded will counterattack. So if you wound 100, 100 defenders will counterattack the units that hit them. 
if they are within range. So let's go over some battle simulations. In this one, we have 500 units versus 1,000 range units. And you'll see that the 500 units, using the battle formula from before, will wound 147 of the defenders. Well, those wounded defenders will counterattack and wound 43 of the attackers. And the remaining of the defenders will also attack, getting another 251 wounds. And this goes back and forth until someone reaches zero uh, total troops. The second battle simulator is with a 10,000 range troops. And this just shows it at a longer extent. And you can calculate this through and you'll be able to determine how the battle works with attacks and counterattacks. Next, we can talk about troop priority. Troops will always attack from the highest tier troop in its range based on priority. Range troops won't directly attack any other unit until all the mounted layers are gone. And mounted troops won't attack any other unit until all the ground troops are gone. Siege will attack siege and then range. And ground will prioritize archers and siege once they're able to reach them. So the actual troop priority isn't as important as your realistic troop priority. And that's because the ground and mounted troops have a very difficult time to attack siege and range when the enemy ground and mounted troops are still uh, in the battle. Now, the ground troops will, after a long period of battles, bypass the mounted troops to attack the range troops and to attack the siege troops. However, this is hardly relevant in most battles and if you want more detail into it uh, let me know in the comments below so looking at true priority we'll determine that siege will target siege first if it's in range and i can tell you that in the beginning of the battle your tier low tier siege are unable to reach enemy siege so they will target ground first and eventually they'll target range and then siege. A true priority is the reason why layers are so important. And this is something that can be abused in order to make your marches incredibly powerful. Which brings us to layers. There are two types of layers. Your attacking layers used for doing damage and your defensive layers used to protect your attacking layers. In this example, I have 100 mounted troops versus 100 ranged troops. And the mounted troops actually win even if the troop modifier is in the ranged troop favor due to the mounted troops' superior stats. However, if we add layers to the ranged troops of one troop each, you can look on the right side and it's just one troop wounded on the ground and range and all these other units we added. We're able to win with 21 survivors. And if we add even more layers, we'll notice that it's 100 survivors. And these range troops do deal most of the wounds. And so that just shows you all these additional layers that we add are actually protecting our range units that these mounted troops have to uh, defeat all these other layers in order to get to your range units so let's take everything that we've learned about layers and take a look at a actual battle and break it down in this one we have a keep at 500 million power against a keep at roughly 700 million power in a battlefield uh, and you'll see that the attacker only lost 9,000 troops where the defender lost a million and a half. And this is a huge power swing. Uh, another thing to uh, take a look at is death to survival on the bottom. And we'll go over this in a moment. So we're looking at the actual troop composition. Now the defender, he was using some meta that I am not familiar with, the Hannibal and Minamoto combination. 
that is beyond my knowledge. But what's important to look at here is he is using one and a half million tier 14 mounted troops, no layers, and they only wounded 10,000. So what happened? The battle starts off with the attackers all attacking the mounted troops. And that is why you'll see the tier 13 ground troops get 46 kills. It's because they attacked first. After everyone attacks, the mounted troops will then attack the highest tier ground troop, which is the tier 13s. And it wipes them out completely, takes away all 1,000 troops. However, you see 83 survivors, and that is due to the death to survivor rate that we mentioned before. Now, all the attackers attack again, and the defenders now attack the next uh, tier ground troops, which are the tier 12 ground troops. Then they'll attack the tier 11 ground troops, and then the tier 10. And this is going to go all the way down until they reach all the ground troops, and then they'll move on to the next priority target. One thing to take note of, look at the tier 13 mounted troops and the tier 12 mounted troops. They have wounds, but that's not from being directly attacked. Those are from counterattack damage, as we mentioned before. They didn't lose all 1,000 of their layers. This is specifically due to them attacking a stronger tier troop. Another thing to take note of is look at your tier 13 ground uh, kills versus your tier 12 ground kills. Uh, the tier 12s killed more. And that is because they attacked twice. Another reason why tier 12s look so strong is because they're attacking more often due to the tier 13s protecting them. And also just to reiterate the reason why the siege and the range troops don't have any wounds is because the mounted troops are not within range to counterattack them. All right, this video is getting kind of long and to save you guys from all the math, I'm gonna make a new video that talks about uh, more detail in layers, rally, and reinforcement mechanics, how to abuse all these mechanics and defeat stronger opponents, tier one mounted walls, why they work, and how you can defeat them. I can go over some of the best free underrated generals that may surprise you, and some game breaking glitches that I found. Any questions that you have or anything that you want me to go over, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to include it in the next video. And remember, Ebony is a terrible game. It's not worth your time. It is definitely not worth your money. It's great for meeting people all around the world, but don't take the game too seriously. I've enjoyed uncovering these mechanics so that free-to-play players stand a chance against coiners, but in the end, it's all kind of a waste of time. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.